rises for the win from 29 from the right hash. Kuz kick is good. Here is Durant for the win. We had it. NBA agency started today. With us, we got a special guest wearing an amazing hoodie. Thank you. We got you. Mr. Charles Dansby here with us today. Antoine couldn't be with us. He's a traveling musician making the world a better place. But let's jump right into it, man. Kevin Durant, uh, three hours prior to uh, free agency beginning, requested a trade from the Nets. Um, it was shocking news when it happened. But now that I I look back to the last week or so, the signs were there, you know. So I want to say prior to the playoffs ending, uh, there was a story that came out that, you know, Kevin Durant hadn't spoken to the Nets or whatnot. And one thing about the NBA I've learned is that when a story comes out, it comes out because someone wants us to hear what was said, per se. So I feel like that was his camp kind of like dropping hints. Then sometime last week, the odds for DeAndre Ayton joining the Nets in Vegas just all of a sudden got two twice better. You know what I'm saying? Like so, like Vegas knows about things way before we do. So they probably knew that, and we were caught up in the Kyrie chase. You know, Kyrie going to the Lakers, and is he going to opt in or whatnot? Turns out that was KD related. So uh, let's get y'all feedback on uh, what's going on. Then we'll hop into some uh, scenarios. So KD. Request a trade. We'll start with the the rookie, the freshman, uh, Mr. Dansby, man. Tell me what you think. Um, first, I want to say LeBron could never. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron could never sign a four-year deal. Then the next year, request a trade because everything's not going his way or, you know, the organization or there's problems with Kyrie. <laughs> he could never. If he did, he'd be called soft. He'd be called trash. He'll say he can't lead a team. The only thing we said about <laughs> Kevin Durant right now is, oh, we understand. So I just want to put that out there. Le LeBron. I mean, po points are being made. He could never. This is why he's the GOAT. Um, <laughs> I, know that, I know that hurts Corey, but this is why he's the GOAT. But anyway, man, um, I'm not mad at it. The only thing I ask is I just hope Kevin Durant stays in the East, um, go to the Heat. Go home to Washington for all I care. I just don't want him in the West. Um, you know, my guy's almost 40 years old. <laughs> but we, we, we diving straight into the LeBron family. I just said, like, man. Like I, right. Like, what is going I'm on here? I'm sorry. Y'all know how I am, man. He's a guy almost 40 years old. Um, so I would love for him to stay in the East, at least to compete, you know, get back to where, get back to, get to, get to the finals, win something. Um, stop changing teams so much before you go back to the West or, you know, if you get added to Phoenix, I would love to see him go down there, play with Jimmy Butler, go to a Pat Riley in the Heat, um, him and Kyle Lowry together. They could be a great defensive team. Um, so I would just love to see him stay in the East, um, go back, compete against Boston, compete against Milwaukee, um, and actually win something um, before, you know, maybe you go back to the West, unless you're going back to Oklahoma. You go back to Oklahoma, that's different. But <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting you say that because OKC actually has – like a lot of pieces. They got a lot of draft picks, a lot of young players that could in the Nets. That's an interesting uh, point. All right, Corey, let's hear what you got to say about Kevin Durant. Um, initially, when I first heard the news, I was I was shocked. Uh, but then, as I, I as I started to think about it, like to to Dansby's point, I can understand what's going on in Brooklyn um, when you have a when you have an individual that basically brings you into a team and says, "Hey, let's 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 join up in Brooklyn and let's let's get this thing done." And throughout the season, you know, I understand the pandemic, I understand all that, but you know, it, it comes down to a point where it's like, "You brought me here. What are we doing?" Are you going to yeah. play? Or are you not? Like, what are we doing? Like, you literally brought me here. I could have gone anywhere. I literally 
literally could have gone anywhere in the in the NBA. But I came here to team up with you. And now here we are. Now we're, you know, thinking about breaking this thing up. Um, I, I I don't know if you guys saw it, but uh um there was actually a report just recently that said they actually want to leave Brooklyn, but they still want to play together. Yeah, they wouldn't mind playing together. Yeah. I'm interested I, to hear like I would like to know how legit that is. Like is it they wouldn't mind playing together or do they want to play together? Because like that would take a, a massive. Right. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? There's a difference there. Yeah. Um, and the one thing that I don't like about the, the whole situation is I think we're getting to a point where and I, we were discussing this on a different episode. Like the players have too much power. Right. And it, it, it's getting to a point where like. You know, if I'm if I'm a Brooklyn fan, or if I, if or or if I work in uh, Brooklyn's front office, like we just got screwed, right. like really screwed as a as an organization. We had you know um, KD, Kyrie, and James Harden, and we get absolutely nothing out of it. I mean, we've been we've been, been Simmons, we've been <laughs> <laughs> we've been swept in the playoffs. Like these are Hall of Fame type players. And we have nothing to show for it. Um, I mean, we basically gave up, you know, all our capital to 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 put this team together. Um, and it, it's a it's a huge failure. And like I said, the, I think the players are, have a little bit too much power, especially especially if we get another situation where KD and Kyrie end up on the same team somewhere else. It's just like, okay, so like, what was wrong with Brooklyn? Like, here we here we go again. So like the the. The sequence of events is interesting because, you know, Kyrie and KD, they're caught in an all-star game. This is when Kyrie's still in Boston. KD's on Golden State. They pe- they get pictures of them talking and going out to dinner. People know they're going to be teaming up. And if I remember correctly, there were reports that KD was a little bit more interested in Knicks, but was going to go wherever that Kyrie goes. So to go to the Nets, we know KD's out for a year. Kyrie struggles with the Nets the little bit he plays that year, then gets hurt, doesn't come back for the bubble. The now, the Nets had a good thing going, man. They had they had good young talent. They had Jared Allen. They had uh Levert. They had Torian Prince. Like the, you said what now? D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, like they mm, had yeah. a good yeah. it, it reminded me of the Clippers before uh Kawhi and um Paul George got there. Like they didn't have a superstar but they had a lot of uh they had good coaching. They had gritty play. Um, you know, then they get Kyrie and KD on top of that. And it really should have stopped there. Looking back. Mm, I got but, yeah. but I think they got James Harden one because you can get your your team could be insurmountable. Like you just can't beat that team too much firepower. But two, I think James Harden was like a backup plan for if Kyrie start doing weird stuff, being Kyrie, not playing, getting hurt. But Trading Jared Allen was huge at the yeah, time. Right. Trading Jared Allen was huge. I was like, you have to hold on to Jared Allen because DeAndre Jordan's a stiff now at this point in his career. So, you know, we know what happens after that. Um, you know, injuries derail their season last year. I will say, like, even though they didn't play 16 games together, when they did play, like, even without chemistry, there was so much skill and firepower. It would have been really tough to beat them last year. At full strength, like Milwaukee went seven games with Kyrie playing two of them, two or three, and James and James Harden playing a limited three or so. Like that's what they were looking like. Um, and then you know we know the vac- vaccination stuff this year. Harden leaves. I think this is the most dis- dysfunctional three year stretch I've ever seen out of a team. I agree. I agree. like I I've never seen anything like it. So. Um, but I it's, do like moving forward. I, I, I don't think I want to see this tandem again. In my opinion, I don't. I don't think from a just a, a entertainment standpoint. I don't think I want to see. I think I, I'm sportscasters and analysts have have said this numerous times. Like um, you can't trust Kyrie, and that's. I mean, what do you what do you do? What do you right. do, man? You know, it's crazy to me, me though, though. I think the problem is, you know, with Kevin Durant, you no know, leadership. There's no real lead, right? Up at the go. 
we got Steph, we got Draymond. No, you even got a, you got with Kyrie, you got the leader on LeBron John. Right. So when you have a KD leader, right. So that's why. The, yeah, and I and I saw somebody bring this up earlier. Um, is KD doesn't make anyone around him better. Now they were comparing uh, KD to to Steph, and and over the years, as Steph has made people around him better, he's made Clay Thompson better, he's made Draymond better, even uh, Andre I- I- uh, Iguodala. KD has not made anyone better around him. Yeah. And I think that's the difference, um, you know, when it comes to putting a team together and, and you know, taking your team to the next level and winning a championship. I mean, even, you know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm a big LeBron hater, but I understand that LeBron <laughs> makes people around him better. I think, like, and that's what that's what it's about being a leader and an athlete in, in this uh, in this sport. Yeah, I think I think when it comes to, like, pe- making people better. I think at the end, of, sometimes it just comes down to your style of play to some degree. Like when you're just you, your primary job is scoring. It's always, I feel like it's always going to be harder for you to make people better. I do think like KD KD can pass, but just the nature of his game is he's like a hired assassin. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's he's a scorer. Like you look at like a Devin Booker or. Um, Jason Tatum kind of per- even when Jason Tatum is getting a lot of assists, like I don't feel like his his game at, in itself naturally elevates people. So you can learn how to be a playmaker, but your game elevated people. Steph, when Steph steps on the court, people are better <laughs> because of the gravity that he creates. And of course, LeBron and Chris Paul's of the world control stuff. Like, can, do we know that? Well, I won't go into comparisons with, with old folks, but <laughs> now I, I definitely. KD, man, you know, without those three years in in uh, Golden State, you know, how would we look at his career? Where would failure. we rank him? You said what? It would be a failure. It w- I failure. agree. Like He would be what Russell West. Yeah, like even, even with the time in Golden State, I can't help but feel like if I look at KD's career in its entirety – it feels like it's kind of a letdown. Like he has two rings and an MVP. Of course, he his numbers are gaudy. Like he's you know fifty, forty, ninety threat every year, and he's just an incredible score. But I can't help but think like KD could have been more dominant than he's been. So all right, let's hop into the scenarios. Well, we know KD's top choices right now are Phoenix and Miami. But, uh, you know, as reported by Woj, over half the teams have called. You have to. You as, have soon, to. As, as soon as Kevin Durant uh, demands a trade, everybody's front office needs to be on Zoom within five minutes, no matter where Kicking you are. Okay, tired. If you with your family, you get on a meeting and we got to talk about what we can do uh, to bring Kevin Durant. Uh, I think Phoenix has more to offer than Miami now that, you know, I know that they can't move Bam. And they won't move Jimmy. So unless you're really high on Tyler Hero, Kyle Lowry's 45 years old. I'm not sure how much value he has. Uh, Duncan Robinson is hit or miss. Um, I know they have Strauss and they have some picks. But then again, heat culture is a thing. And and playing for Pat Riley is certainly a thing. Now Phoenix, Phoenix has their situation with DeAndre Ayton. They don't want to pay him. I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. I'm good at it. That's the problem. Right. Like, he's, he's, DeAndre is a good center. With Chris Paul. D- that That's true as well. Chris Paul definitely elevated his game. Like, in 2022, if it's not Embiid or Jokic, right. you don't need a good center. It's great or serviceable. <laughs> but you can't pay a good center a max deal. So, they can put something together around a sign and trade with Aiton. Um, you know, Mikel Bridges and Cam Johnson will probably be up for grabs as well. Uh, the report came out that the Nets said they're not doing anything without uh, Devin Booker being brought back. But Devin Booker just signed a Supermax anyway, so he wouldn't be eligible for a trade. So what are some ideas and things you guys have thought about regarding enticing teams? Like, Or what, what do you want to see? 
I know what Charles wants to see. It's probably across so his he, chest right now. <laughs> I want. He can't go to the Lakers. Okay. We don't have to offer him. Mm-hmm. I think that he has the most off. You know, Duncan Rob missed, but right now is on the hold of Ben Simmons. Mm-hmm. Hold on to Ben Simmons. You had a Duncan Rob. Because if I'm if I'm the best building around Ben, yeah. What does he do? Right. He needs playmakers. That's true. That's probably a hero. That's Duncan Robinson, right? So now we throwing some first. We can build some. We've shown that we can draft with them. So it's like that's not a bad. Idea. If not, maybe Portland. Portland don't have anything, up, but they do have Simon. Maybe some picks. That was something. Yeah, that was something else that kind of that was kind of a precursor to this as well when Dame dropped the picture of him and KD in the Blazers uniform earlier this week. And we like, yo, what's going on? Like, all the signs were there. And uh, and reportedly, uh, people around the league had been talking about it for the last week. They were, you know, team front offices were calling their stars, like, what you think about KD and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so you said Portland. Yeah, I'm not sure what they have to offer. Anthony Simon. Anthony Simon. Well, he, so he just got signed as well. If I'm not mistaken, when you sign your contract, and we're going to do an episode on salary cap stuff so we can, so everybody knows all the terms and all that. If I'm not mistaken, as soon as you sign, you can't be traded unless it's a sign and trade. So the fact that Anthony Sign has just uh, signed for four years, 100 mil, I'm not sure if he's eligible. Um, I don't know. What you think, Corey? What were your thoughts on some possible destinations? Um, I think Phoenix is out of the question. Really? Yeah, because I think they're going to want it, Devin Booker every yeah, time. Yeah. Um, and Phoenix is not willing to give that up. So I think that makes Phoenix out of, out of the window. Um, I'm going to say Miami. I think they have more pieces to give. But I actually think this is going to go on for a while. Mm-hmm. I don't think this trade is going to happen anytime soon. Right. I think the cards are going to be played because Brooklyn – doesn't want just anything that right i mean we're talking about a, a, a sniper a future hall of famer top 15 he player is all the time. champion right right so i think this is going to go on for a minute i'm anxious to see what happens but i don't i don't know i don't i don't want to see him team up with a bunch of like all-stars again though something upset now, yeah, like with a bunch of good players and some well, good depth. Okay. Well, what team? What team? What team would you not want to see him with then? Like, what would that look like? Because I, I, to me, if he went to Miami or Phoenix, like I don't, that wouldn't feel like what the Warriors felt like when he went there. I don't want to see him with the Lakers and Devin Booker. Oh, okay, no, I mean that would be sick, but it would. It, I don't feel like it would be. I, like, if he went, if, to me, if he went to play with LeBron, I'd be like, okay, come on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, or if he went back to Golden State. If it's Devin Booker, Chris Paul, and KD, like, that's 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 power right there. But Clippers. Oh, oh okay. If, if that was even possible, okay. So I don't want to see that either. I don't want to see that either. But I, I I said that to someone earlier today. I was like, if you're the Clippers, you're definitely meeting about Paul George for KD. You're definitely so these this is these are the problems I think that are gonna come to the forefront. Cause KD on paper doesn't have leverage, but I feel like he does because he's KD. So one, he doesn't have a no trade clause. Two, he doesn't have at the end of his contract, he doesn't have a player option. So he just has a four year deal. Like that's that's just what he has, which is you really trusted Brooklyn to sign that type of deal. <laughs> like, what are you doing? But if you're a team and you trade for Kevin Durant, like I just feel like he has to want to play for you. Like he has to want yeah. to play for you. Or do I think Kevin, uh, not Garnett, Kevin Durant is capable of doing what Ben Simmons did and just being like, yeah, I don't want to play for them. I don't know. You, you, you never know with these players these days. But like, it's just not going to be a good, say, a good situation if you have Kevin Durant. He doesn't want to play for you. So. That, I think, is what's going to help Phoenix and Miami in that situation because, like, 
there's incentive to get that deal done. When the report came out last week that Brooklyn was willing to give up Kyrie and KD, like there was a leverage war going on between Kyrie Irving and the Nets. You know, Kyrie's like, I'll leave and sign with the Lakers for $6 million. You, you, you try me if you want to. <laughs> like that was that's all that was. But I think the Nets, the the Nets want their organization back. They've given Kevin Durant and Kyrie too much power. Um, I downloaded a book on it. I, I don't remember the name on it, but it, it, it spoke about like unprecedented levels of power. And these, and these players have a lot why, of power. I think that's why this trade is going to take forever because I think other organizations are going to look at that and be like, I don't want to give these players that much power where we can't function if something was to go wrong. Right. So that's why I think this trade is going to take a minute to happen. Stephen A. Smith always brought up the point that when the collective bargain agreement is over, the owners are going to go crazy. <laughs> I mean, they have so much leverage, and it gets worse and worse, you know, by the day. Of we have another asking out of a four-year contract. It's not like he's a pending free agent. Like, yeah, that's 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 really bad. Yeah. That's really bad. Um, like Ben Simmons and James Harden made things pretty bad. Mm-hmm. You know, it used to be you're going into the last year of your option. Hey, find a trade for me or I'm leaving for nothing. You know. And I can handle that. Right. right. Yeah, I can handle it. Like you've done seven years somewhere or whatever. But then it was like AD, it was like a year in advance. That was pushing it. Now we're now what players are doing now. Is I'm gonna sign the max, and if I get upset, trade me. <laughs> trade me. Trade me. <laughs> Donovan Mitchell's coming down the pipe as well. I think yes. he might give it one more year, but like he's another one where, like, Donovan Mitchell to Miami's been going on for years. <laughs> like we've been hearing about that for years, or to the Knicks. So it's we're, we, it's definitely reaching an unprecedented unprecedented ground. So let's talk Kyrie. Kyrie. Well, before we move on, yeah. I, I do want to say, I think part of this is because of the coach that the Brooklyn Nets hired. Absolutely. It's a fair I've point. been saying that. I've been saying that. I've been saying that. I've been saying that. I think if they had a veteran coach that had experience with coaching, Brooklyn Nets would not be in the situation they are right now. And that's our ownership. I agree he's the wrong coach. I don't know if he would not be. Uh, so Okay, so let's talk Kyrie. Because Kyrie is the lightning rod to all of this. He has destroyed this franchise. <laughs> so if you guys remember when KD and Kyrie first got there, like Kenny Atkinson ended up being pushed out the door because KD and um, Kyrie were insisting that DeAndre Jordan start over Jared Allen. That, that, that was one of the biggest issues. And Kenny Atkins is like, no. And, like, they chose the players. Um, you know, then they get Steve Nash. You remember Kyrie? He's like, I mean, we don't really even need a coach. And, and this, <laughs> yeah. this, this, and that. The, vac- the vaccine situation was huge. Like, that was when things really... Because that pushed James Harden out the door. As well as their relationship started to deteriorate behind closed doors or whatever. But the vaccine stuff was was really really huge, and it's just now it's just a toxic environment. You they you knew when Sean Marks had a press conference earlier this summer, uh, saying you know we want guys that are willing to sacrifice for the team and all that this and that. You kind of knew like Kyrie's probably not coming back, but you know it is what it's so. They say Kyrie is pushing for the Lakers right now. He's trying to force his way to the Lakers. We'll start with the Laker fan. What are your thoughts? First of all, we know Kyrie Plant. Um, I think that it was kind of unfair. People can get the vaccine. They're just not Kyrie Irving. Right? So it's like he's not the only person. Um, and then Yeah, I mean, yeah, he happened to be in New York that had the mandate. But then I can come in New York, not back. But I just can't live in New York. Play in New York. Right. Because the rule was... So the reason that was in play 
was because New York didn't want to miss out on like big time concerts or whatever from visiting. Like, so say uh, Drake's coming from somewhere and he wants to perform there, but he's not vaccinated. They would they didn't want to miss out on that money and that revenue. So you that's why a visiting player could come in and not be vaccinated. But if you work in Madison Square Garden, you work in Brooklyn or in Queens, you had to be vaccinated. So the rule was quite strange. But go ahead. Um, oh, I say all. I want to say Rose. He said something that was kind of profound to me. Mm-hmm. He said it's been unprecedented twenty months. Of that. We've had three changes in less than. Like- right, right. <laughs> so he said when basketball got back normal, gotta remember this. And when he said that, that made me like, yeah, come to LA. Because Kyrie and LeBron together. Kyrie can do what he does. This basketball, he doesn't get there. He doesn't have to work all the out boys. All of that gets LeBron. It gets two, three years. A little bit more mature. LeBron out of the door. He's the new Kobe. Whoa, whoa, like whoa, 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 whoa. He will be the Kobe Bryant of LA. Whoa, whoa. I don't know what this man talking about. Be one, you, you, you can do it, bro. Okay. You, 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 you jumped off the cliff there. <laughs> no, I didn't. Talk. We need you. All right. We I would, you. I would like we Kyrie Irving, you. but let's. Okay, so love Charles, Charles. <laughs> yeah, Kyrie Irving cannot be the best player on the championship team. I don't know. You really feel like? All right. There's more. There's too much evidence. <laughs> There's way too much but evidence that, that points to that. What basketball are you watching? Nah, At no uh, point in his career I has... A and an AD. AD can't be the best player on the championship no, team. No. Those two pieces, to, you don't feel like can win a championship? No, because unless, unless... The only way that could work is if you had... So so going back to KD, you need a leader. Who's going to be the leader? AD's not going to be the leader. Kyrie, Kyrie definitely not going to be the leader. Do we really think AD can't beat though? Yes. Why do we feel that way? Because it, it's been shown. It's been shown, yeah. L- look, when he's with the Pelicans, right? With the like, Lakers too. With the Lakers. Come on, man, give him a chance. Bro, the, the way the NBA works, if you look at NBA history, like if you go from 1980 to now, there's like seven or eight players that's been in every finals. Magic, Larry, Hakeem, Jordan, Tim Duncan, Kobe, LeBron, D Wade, and uh, Steph Curry. Yeah. Like they've been, they. I'm pretty sure I haven't missed anybody. Like those players. That, so like, there's really only five to seven guys in the league at any given at any given moment. Kyrie and AD are just they're not those guys to me. Unless you they're just not that guy. That, yeah, you just they're just not those guys. So I, I, I don't see them. Now, is having K, Kyrie and AD as a pairing terrible? No, like I wouldn't say no to that. I'm just saying if, if, if Kyrie were to come with AD and LeBron, the championship window for me is as long as LeBron's on the team. Once he's no longer on the team, I think that window is shut. I agree. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Would you have said that about Jalen Brown? They can't go to the final. Because there's no leader. So it's funny you say that because we had a whole a, a whole debate about that. I did think they could, but that's a fair comparison. That's a fair comparison because ultimately leadership did do them in, but they were two one up against the Warriors. So it can happen. It, I just don't <laughs> think it will. You still be with that one? Yeah, but. You also got to think Boston also, Ime Adoka had a lot to do with the, the Boston turnaround as well, though. Like, they stopped listening to Brad Stevens. Like, that's why they kept they kept being underwhelmed. Once Ime made uh, Marcus Smart the starting point guard, which led to their growth and kind of their demise at the end. Not having a point guard at the end hurt them. But Marcus Smart was able to become, like, the leader. So I do think, you know, that was helpful. And he's missing my point, but whatever. He can watch this later. <laughs> but, uh, Kyrie I mean, to the Lakers. Yeah, he's back. 
Um, Kyrie to the Lakers, I think that's the only way, only place he can go. Because no one else is interested. Like, I'm, if I'm a team, I'm not hitching my wagon to Kyrie and, and KD. Like, if I'm talking to the Brooklyn, as I'm like, let's talk about KD. And they, if they say, yeah, we want to add Kyrie, like, I, I might hang up the phone. The only team yeah, desperate I'm enough. Not, I'm to, not trusting Kyrie. No, the only team desperate enough to look <laughs> forward to Kyrie is the Lakers. It's the Lakers. <laughs> So that, I mean, but you know, that's that's sad when you have a person, you have up. a team <laughs> that has LeBron James on on it. You know that you're that desperate to go get Kyrie. Charles, I'll let you. I'll let you handle this. I'll let you handle. I mean, it. I, I'm so t- I don't want to see Kyrie for the Lakers, but like you said, I think that is the only place that any team is willing. To make a deal for him, because you know he wants to go there. So again, so Kyrie is is more time sensitive because he only has one year left. So like, I'm not trading anything away for Kyrie for one year because I'm one not year. going to win. So I like he, I Kyrie Irving's probably going to be a Laker next year. Like I don't see how it doesn't happen because the Nets have to get rid of him. And he has to go somewhere, and there's only one person, only one place that's willing to take him on. Only thing is, I don't think the Nets want Russell Westbrook. Yeah, I was gonna say, what do you do with Russ now? So, do you have to get a third team involved, where maybe you send Russ to Indiana because Indiana wants to uh, uh, an expiring contract? You know, you pay him forty seven million next year, and then that comes off the books. And then you send Kyrie to L.A., and then you send uh, Halliburton and, and Buddy Heald to the Nets. And Malcolm Brogdon. You said what now? Is Malcolm Brogdon. Yes. Yes, he is, if I'm not mistaken. And then Miles Turner is also another piece that they've been floating around. It's players on Indiana. It's on the trade block every year. <laughs> so, like, that's an option. Or, or, I don't even know, something with... Sacramento or a team like that, like maybe maybe you have to get a third team involved. I'm pretty sure the Lakers are gonna move everything in their power to try to get Kyrie because if we just look at the career sample size, it worked with LeBron and everywhere else. It it just hasn't. Like it's not even a matter of just Kyrie. Um, you know, hasn't won a championship without LeBron. Kyrie's actually played poorly in the playoffs. Since he's left LeBron, like he had poor performances with the Celtics, and uh, you know he went off game one this year, but then had poor performance. He had 15 points, I think, the last three games after they were the only team to get swept. So, <laughs> all right, that's enough on KD and Kyrie. Let's talk about Bradley Beal. Mm. Corey, you said something earlier today uh, about Bradley Beal. Let me see, let me pull it up. I think you said he don't want to win. Yes, my yeah. exact words were when I saw him get that uh, contract from the Washington Wizards, I said, Bradley Bill does not want to win. All right, so Bradley Bill just signed a five-year extension, $250 million. He He's getting broke off, right. Cares. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. Give your spill, Charles. Give your, give your spill. Um, it's funny that he posted that because I posted it. Cares about winning. <laughs> Two hundred million. What he had a another hundred million, maybe a couple of years ago. Uh, let's be real. Multiple people can't win that. Right. The same people are winning. The consistent. If it was the stuff this year, it might have. If everything would have went right, it would have been right. So it's just like the same point. I think Bradley Bill is smart. Get the bag. Dame Lillard is smart. Get the bag. Right. You're not going to win a championship. It's just it's not possible. Brad, yeah, Bradley Bill. Bradley Bill probably has to be your third best player in the big three to win. And right now he's the number one. You're right, right. Right now he's just going to get there. I have minutes. a statue in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> so why would I leave that? It's so here's my thing. Third so here's my thing, like as sports fan, and I'm guilty of this too. 
I feel like we talk out of both sides of our mouths. We talk, <laughs> well, not me, because I don't really care about the whole loyalty thing. But we talk about how guys need to be loyal and they need to not look for shortcuts. You know, make you know, trust your organization to build something around you. And this is that. And then there are situations where, like a Bradley Beal, this happened with Carmelo with the Knicks, um, or it might have been the Nuggets. It might have been both times he signed extensions. It's like we question their competitiveness because they're not trying to go elsewhere to compete. But when other guys do it, we're like, oh, y'all trying to stack the get deck, or y'all trying to team because. Where would Bradley Bill go? Like, you know, he'd probably try to get a sign and trade to the 76ers or something or try to – there was talk about him going to the Warriors. So, like, where – like, we say he doesn't want to win. Like, the Wizards What do you want him were, to do? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, the, the Wizards were making, like, the second round of the playoffs, you know, five, six years ago or whatnot when he had John Wall. Like, it kind of fell apart recently, three, four years. But – and I understand, but like, so what? So what? What is what is Bradley Beal supposed to do? I think in this situation, they don't have the pieces, in my opinion, to even make the playoffs. That's my thing. Now, nobody's saying you have to go and team up with the LeBron and AD. Not to say that that was a rumor, but I'm just using that as an example. Oh, that was a rumor, and I wanted it. I was like. I was pushing for Bradley Beal before uh, Russ and Buddy Hill and all that. I was, I've been on Bradley Beal for a year and a half, but go ahead. Yeah, but just go to a team that has just came out of the playoffs that you see is up on, you know, up and coming. Um, I don't know, maybe like a Charlotte that, you know, was a fringe playoff team that's missing a star or whatever the case may be. But now look at I don't know. But but also like look at it like this. And this is where I kind of see Charles's point like as fans, we see things on the court. We see it as on the court. Like we also got to look at life. Like Bradley Bill is a grown man. I, I don't know if he has a family. He might have a family. He does. Yeah, so every time like we say just go to a team like that's moving your family. You know, that's moving your life. That's moving everything you have. Bradley Beal's in a place where, like, he gets to be the man and score 30 every night for $250 million for the next five years. I'm not, bruh, I'm not mad. <laughs> Get your money. Get your money. I'm not mad at that at and all. And maybe, maybe he trusts the organization. Like, Kevin Garnett was on the Timberwolves for a long time, and he, he got some of this criticism as well. You know, he's like, does he, you know, you trying to win? So I, I hear what you're saying, but sometimes I think we got to be a little bit more fair to the players, like, I mean, like, what do we what do we want? You know, no, I, I'm not mad at him. You know, like I said, get the bag. I just, in my mind, when I see that, I know you're not trying to win or compete for a championship. You're just like you said. Just, I'm gonna be the man in in DC. I'm gonna drop thirty, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take this bag on and get a family. statue, like Charles said, and get the statue. <laughs> But, and my thing is, though, why don't you know, not Bradley Bill's job? His yeah. job is to show up. Yeah. It's their job to put the player in the ground. Right? So it's like, why should I have to leave my to go chase something? I probably won't get it if I go to Charlotte with LaMelo Ball, with Terry Rozier, <laughs> Miles Bridges. So Miles I'm gonna Bridges just got arrested, so. Miles Bridges in trouble. Yeah. Come on. But no, I mean, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great point. That's a great point. It is, it is. We have to hold the organization a little bit more accountable to build teams that are competitive. Um, and I think the Wizards have shown over the year, over the past few years, that we can't count on them to put out a competitive team They're right incapable. now. Incapable. They're incapable. All right, three to four minutes on the Hawks. Cause we ready to be running late. Hawks trade for DeJounte Murray. They trade Gallo, who ends up getting bought out by the Spurs. Three first round picks. What is the ceiling for the Hawks, Corey? I'll let you go. I don't have my Hawks flag uh, readily available. <laughs> but um, my expectation for the Hawks is conference finals or bust. Uh, mm. 
Trey Young now has a All Star next to him, and if we look at the roster as presently constructed, um, not taking to the fact that we might trade John Collins, you have Trey Young, Dezonte Murray, DeAndre Hunter, which I told you guys I'm very high on, uh, John Collins, and Clint Capella. I think that's enough to compete in the East. They have to be a top four seed. And they have to make. It, they have to make. I mean, is that so out of the rim? I'm just laughing first at Charles. All, Brooklyn, <laughs> first of all, Brooklyn is out of the window now. Yeah, these trades are about to happen. So it, we'll we'll see if KD stays in the East or goes out west. Um, but yeah, oh, so I got he has another. He has another playmaker. He Trey Young doesn't have to do everything offensively now. Uh, he also has a defensive guard that will kind of help him hide on defense a little bit better. Um, and we'll see what happens with John Collins moving forward. Um, but even if he does stay, remember how I always said John Collins has to have twenty and seven. John Collins don't have to do that anymore. He has, an, like I said, he has another scoring guard. John Collins can put up fifteen and. Nine or something, but uh, yeah, conference finals or bust. All right, so I'm going to pull up the Eastern Conference standings, and you tell me who Atlanta has catapulted above, in your opinion, just right now. All right, so Atlanta ended up being the A seed. Um, I look at the nine and ten. Is Atlanta better than Cleveland right now? Just yes or no from both of y'all. Yes. Yes. Okay, they better than Charlotte. Yes. Okay. Are they? Oh, Brooklyn's probably <laughs> going to be in shambles. Yes. Uh, right, right, right. Brooklyn. Well, yeah, it's fu- it's funny you say that. Don't defense third team All NBA third team defensive. I think I think the I I think because they're going to trade Kyrie and KD, they can assemble a decent team that can make the play. <laughs> Okay. Anywhere from seven to ten, I think. I think. I think that's possible. We're gonna. Well, we're also gonna see can Steve Nash coach now, which I, I, I'm not sure he can. No. You're right. Yeah. So like for a situation like this, like this is where you could have used the Kenny Atkinson, you know. Right. But we'll see. All right. Uh, Atlanta better than Chicago. Yes. Ooh. Oh. A healthy Lonzo Ball. Yes. Um, Marta Rosa? He was yes. in the MVP discussion. Oh. Yeah. Chicago, man. Chicago dealt with injuries, but like they just felt like some frauds that second half of the season. And I know that's when I know people got hurt. Like it's just. What? I'm not as high on Chicago. I'm not answering the. I'm not answering here, but okay. Uh, is okay. Atlanta better than Toronto? Yes. Yes. Is Atlanta better than Philly? I feel like we're right there in the same class. They're neck and neck. I mean, James Harden's running stairs. He's going to be in shape, so. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. <laughs> Is Atlanta better than Milwaukee? No. Boston? No. No. And Miami? No. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I want to give that one a test. I'm going to say yes. Okay. So right now. I mean, they just lost TJ Tucker. Um, and we don't know, you know, what else is going to go with uh, Miami Heat. Yeah. I mean, today is, today is June 30th. So we, he, they could have KD for all we know by the time the season starts. But yeah, so, so as of right now, you, if we're just ranking teams, you ha- right now, Corey, you have Atlanta around three. Uh, Charles, you have them around five. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Oh, <laughs> well, that's fair enough. All right, so it's been a crazy day uh, just yes. to get things going. There are a lot of underrated uh, signings that we could talk about. We won't, but that were noteworthy to me. Like Joe Ingles to the Bucks, I think is low-key a really good pickup. Um, the Lakers picked up a bunch of 9 through 12 players, uh, <laughs> but they're young, <laughs> so it helps. Um, but, you know, if anything else uh, pops off, we'll do another emergency session. This wasn't planned until... 4 p.m. today, like oh, right, wow. we got to get this going. But all right, we appreciate y'all tuning in. Until next time.
And uh, also, too, man, thanks for Charles for coming on. Oh, yeah, uh, man. Yeah, man. Today. Appreciate the really appreciate, appreciate it, the impromptu appearance. Yes, sir. Thank y'all. Thank you for joining us on the For the Win podcast. Make sure you follow us on IG at For the Win Vodcast, on YouTube at For the Win, on Apple Music, on Spotify. We are everywhere. For the win. And we out. Peace. Yes, sir.